All right, we are back from the break. Welcome back, everyone. I hope you enjoyed that run of RE2, Meg. It's definitely a classic game, and I think it is definitely a staple in horror speedrunning and horror in general. Our next game is going to be a little bit weirder, but this has become a quick favorite of mine, uh, both just to kind of watch, and it's a general game, and it might be a game that you maybe never heard of. Uh, the next game is going to be one called Kudelka, which uh, my knowledge of this game is that it is the precursor to a series called Shadow Hearts, which might resonate with some of you in chat. Uh, it's going to be a horror RPG. We don't see a lot of those, so this should be a very exciting game if you're in anything like that. Anyway, we're going to be having Kudelka with Miss Scarlet Tanager. Take it away. Hello! Yes, Kadelka is definitely an interesting and strange game. The only other horror RPG I can think of besides it, like actual horror RPG, is Shadow Hearts, its sequels, and Parasite Eve. So, Sweet home. Huh? Sweet home. Oh, Sweet Home! I forgot about Sweet Home. I forgot about the precursor to my favorite horror franchise. I am a terrible speedrunner. Okay, so um, first thing that I personally do before I even touch the actual playing of the game is um, this game, despite being a PlayStation 1 game, actually has almost full button remapping. You can remap all of the face buttons, which is nice because I'm not a fan of how they are set up out of the gate because for some reason they put run on circle instead of square as default, which if anybody knows me, hello, I play a lot of obscure games like Kuon, which does have that control scheme, which makes it hard to run sometimes. Anyway, we are going to get straight into it in three, two, one, click. All right. So the story of Kadelka is essentially a motley crew of three people who very much dislike each other, at least for the first 80% of the game, um, are infiltrating a weird, demon-possessed, haunted little monastery. And as you can see, I skipped the intro cutscene and it throws you right into a fight. You don't even get to look at your inventory before it's already showing you how to fight. The game sort of has a bit of a um, Final Fantasy tactics system in that is a RPG with turn-based combat, but also has a weird grid system. The grid system is very small, though, and there's no terrain that you generally have to deal with. So for the most part, you won't see using the grid too much. It only comes into play a couple times in the game, mostly towards the beginning here. And also, yes, it has some of the best music ever, in my opinion. The, like, three songs in it. So... One thing that can make this game both a lot of fun to run and a lot of uh, headache to run is that the game is very, very RNG. Every single drop is RNG. The stats of every weapon and uh, equipment that you get is RNG. And most, if not, no, it's like all but like one or two of the equipment and weapons you get are random drops from enemies or random statted drops from bosses. So... Any two Kadelka runs can end up looking completely different from each other. Come on. Also, sometimes Kadelka just doesn't like to open doors or go upstairs when you tell her to. She just likes to be special like that sometimes. And because this is a speed run, we skip all of the cutscenes, which is kind of a shame because Kadelka has some of the most gorgeous cutscenes I've ever seen, and if I recall, was one of the first games that ever got full motion cap. So all of its cutscenes are fully motion capped, and since they pretty much, as far as I can remember, only take place from one camera angle in each cutscene, you get to see all of the glorious mocap. And it's really good mocap. So I guess two, one question and one general comment. Yes. Um, with Kudelka and the quality of it, I know this was a very late era PS1 game. I think it was like 1999. And this game was one of the only ones that had, I think, actual, like, was it theater actors who voice acted mm -hmm. the characters? Like, yeah, actual voice actors and wasn't just using uh, random guys they had around the uh, the area. Yeah. Um, it's a uh, analogous game I can sort of think of as Silent Hill 2 in that the voice actors and the mocap actors are the same people. Um, they yeah. used, yeah, they used the people who did the voices as the mocap actors, and if I recall, they were theater actors. So here's the one, R like, big RNG moment that can actually cause a reset. Thankfully, I have a backup save just in case. 
<laughs> yep, we have to reset. Okay. Um, thankfully, I did have a backup save because I thought ahead. So the reason why I reset there was you could see that I had a mystic weapon. If you have a mystic weapon at that particular drop, okay, if you have a mystic weapon at that particular drop, it pretty much forces a reset. There are two weapons there, the hammer and the pipe. If either of them are mystic, vital, or light, it's an automatic reset. And if both of them are water, it's an automatic reset. Now, the reason behind that is kind of complicated, but it mostly comes down to the fact that literally everything in the game is randomized, including the elements on the weapons. And some particular um, elements pretty much cause you to lose 10 to 20 minutes at certain boss fights early in the game, unless you have at least a decent elemental setup. Especially if it's Mystic, which causes you not to do damage to HP, but you do damage to their MP. Or Vital, which causes you to absorb HP, but you hardly do any damage. So, thanks. So, that actually, um. Oh, good. Oh, so thankfully I have this backup save, which has one of the best RNGs for the weapons, and it took me like an hour of just resetting and resetting to get that. So. That definitely feeds into my next question. I was going to ask, um, I know RNG can be bad. Is the, uh, What's like, can you get like really good RNG that can make it run ridiculously good oh. on the opposite end? Obviously, oh, we don't yeah. get it here, but is it possible? It is possible. And to be honest, um, the RNG in general in the game is not actually that um, important. And just to show chat here, um, I have a fire pipe and I have an earth pipe on this save. The... Are, are you gonna... There we go. Um, the best RNG is either fire earth or fire water, specifically for a boss fight coming up. But the only real, like, game-ending RNG point is this one. To be honest, um, every other RNG point is just, okay, you're gonna be losing time, but it's not like you're gonna, you know, lose a run. So in order to sort of game the uh, boss's RNG here, I'm just going to get right up in his face and start attacking him. This is the only time in the game you do this, because generally you never want to have um, Kadelka or the third character that you get after this, James, anywhere near any enemies, because uh, it gets pretty obvious pretty quickly that the character Edward, we're just going to pump, we're just going to pump up his uh, health stat and pump up his defense stat, stick him in front of the other two characters and just let them be glass glass cannons behind him. Cause that's just the way that it is. Um, Cause this game has like a, it has a stat system upon level up and you'll see it after this fight. That's, um, wow, that was really fast. Um, that upon level up, I just remember what I need to do. Okay. It is stat based which can get a little funky later on because of RNG, of course. There we go. And at least for the first disc or so, your like what you put stats into is pretty stringent. You need to make sure you put specific level ups into specific stats in order to make early boss fights easy. So the beginning of the game, the first disc or disc and a half, has a lot of needing to remember how to do things, which is one of the reasons why I still use the guide, even though I've played this game quite a few times at this point. Um, but later on, it gets a little, eh, you might want to put some points here, you might want to put some points there. But for Edward, we're just going to shove all of his points into vitality for the most part. Kadelka and James get a little bit more of attack. Now, the... Ooh, ooh, this is this is not the best RNG because this guy likes to shoot Kadelka, which is not the best. But this, yeah, yeah, because he does a lot of damage and he's not very nice. All right. Now, normally I would run away from all the fights, but for this area, just because of XP routing, you want to make sure you get into two fights before the next boss, specifically to force a level up on James which is the third character that we got during a cutscene that I just skipped. And James is a priest. He's not hes not a nice priest. Now, it kind of makes me sad that I'm going to be skipping all the cutscenes because they're just, they're just beautiful and gorgeous. 
so you won't get to see a lot of him, but let's see here. Oh, oh. there we go. That's what I forgot to do. Come on. There we go. That was a little example of sometimes Kidulka just doesn't like to go upstairs when you tell her to. One thing that I found that can sort of help with that is just let go of all of the face buttons in front of an interactable. Let go of all the face buttons and directional buttons. Wait a half a second and then start smashing X in order to actually interact with something. Because sometimes the uh, movement doesn't like to work. Which... I know since you play Parasite Eve Dices, doesn't Parasite Eve have it where you can like hold a directional button during a fade-in and still go that direction? Yes. Yeah, you can't do that in this game. You need to wait until it um, loads in most of the time. Sometimes you can get away with it. Most of the time you have to wait for a full load in or else Kadelka just won't go forward and you'll have to let go of all the buttons and then push them again in order to actually get her to do something. <laughs> oh Lord, I hate games like that so much. <laughs> so here's our second fight, thankfully. There has been times where I've just had to run into the wall for like 30 seconds waiting for a fight. <laughs> Hopefully I won't have to get a third random fight, but. Also, I should be careful not to accidentally uh, run away from the fight because I have muscle memory that tells me press triangle, then press X because it's technically faster than navigating down to the wait button. The problem is, is when you do that when you're not wanting to actually run from a fight. <laughs> so yeah, these guys I just need to quickly try and kill him so we can get a level up on James. Oh, and this game actually uses um, ammunition for the weapons. It doesn't become too important except for one specific fight later on, but mostly because this is the last mm, part of the game where we're going to be actually using the pistol on Kadelka. <laughs> dump all of his points into agility. <laughs> okay, we got whiskey. That's a weird... That's a weird thing to say. <laughs> whiskey is the equivalent of a phoenix down in this game, by the way. So, this is the second boss fight, and most of the game is actually boss fights. <laughs> you don't spend a lot of time actually doing the random fights. There's, not, there's only one point where you're really level grinding. So, I've got to hope... I can get off two of these. It's okay if I don't, but you have the ability to fortify spells. Okay, he has fire and I need to use that against blue. Okay, Each one of these guys, this is your classic um, RPG elemental boss. Blue is your water. Oh wow, I just one shot him. <laughs> blue is your water. Um, enemy green is your earth, and red is your fire, which means we can need to use those elemental weaknesses attached to the weapons. But for some reason, the game dev, the game dev decided to give the red boss tw about twice the HP of the other ones, so we instead use Kidelka in order to uh, just use something called Fortify Vitality, and you can use their buff spells if you use them on your allies. It buffs that attribute. If you use it on an enemy, it debuffs that attribute. So you try to get vitality once, ideally twice, but half the time he silences, uses silence on Kadalka so she can't cast anymore. But if you can get two vitality downs on the boss, it's good RNG. If you get one, okay, it looks like we're getting good RNG. If you get one, that means that you're going to be out the fight for a little bit longer. But thankfully, we got two. So, Eck, I heard that uh, you were talking about running this game. You think you're going to do it someday? Possibly. Uh, the thing with RPGs is always, uh, I worry about the fights. All I hear in this game is mostly boss fights. It actually does kind of make it sound a little bit easier. Yeah. Although the fact that during a marathon style run, I watched you have to reset because you didn't get proper RNG is slightly daunting. This is fair, but caveat, 
it is a RNG moment that happens less than four minutes into the run. And if I had to guess, I only reset there 40% of the time, roughly. Because most of the combinations of weapons, elemental types on the weapons that you can get, is usable. Not ideal, but usable. Um, so for the most part, it's usually fine. It's just if you get one of those three elemental types in either of one of the weapons, you just need to reset because you're going to have a bad time if you don't. Well, actually, even speaking of those weapons, I'm actually kind of wondering, uh, I guess for context, because uh, I guess a lot of uh, Twitch chat here is not going to understand as much as um, uh, just generally knowing how the run goes. How much are we going to be using these elemental weapons? Because I imagine in standard RPG fashion, when you get new weapons, you probably want to phase them out anyway. Um, actually using the weapons? Hardly at all after the beginning of the game. <laughs> um, <laughs> the weapons are essentially just for most of the game, just for stat bonuses. Um, just, uh, oh, that's not, hmm. oh, right, I have to move him forward. Uh, Edward uses weapons consistently, though there is a full, like, two disc spread where you're just gonna be skipping Edward's turn because he's just a meat shield for the other two. <laughs> or he's just a meat shield for Kadelka specifically. With one fight, one big fight being the major um, exception to that. Okay. I'm just going to do a little bit of inventory management. We're going to ditch the pistol, goodbye pistol. So something that's interesting to know about this game, and, and by interesting, I mean really, really fun to mess around with if you're playing casually. You can rename every single weapon, accessory, and armor, and tool slash item, like a potion. Every single one of them can be renamed except for like key items. So you could call the whiskey uh, a... Boston Pie, if you wanted. You could call the pistol a saber. You could call, you could name items after your cat. And the best part is, it will persist. So let's say you name a um, potion to soda. So you name the potion soda. And, uh, oh, hold on. Right, tornado. So you name the potion soda, and every potion you get from that point, every from every drop or anywhere else, will be named soda. So it actually carries over, which I find hilarious. <laughs> All right, so I put Edward there for a reason. For some reason, once the boss has started casting, eh, it's not the best RNG. Um, once the boss has started casting, if you shove Edward right where he's standing, it cancels the, um, not always, but it cancels sometimes the boss's attack if she's using a specific attack. Now we have to hope that that attack did not silence Kadelka. Because <laughs> if it did, okay, it did. Good. Because if it had, we would just be sitting here skipping everybody's turn for about two minutes, which is <laughs> less than ideal. Now, if you get good RNG on that first fight, the one that I had right for skipping the intro cutscene, the best RNG on that fight is to get a panacea drop or panacea drop from it. Because if you do, let's see if I can just. Because if you do, if Kadelka gets silenced, you can just skip it. You can just heal her, it's fine. But if you don't, whenever Kadelka gets silenced and you don't have a panacea, you just get to chill and skip people's turns until the status effect goes away, <laughs> which kind of sucks, but it is what it is. There we go. Yeah, we're just going to throw that item immediately on Kadalka because most of this run is just doing everything you can to turn Kadalka into a cannon. <laughs> and eventually, as long as you get decent RNG, you don't even need good RNG, as long as you get decent RNG on the stat drops on your uh, items, then Kadelka starts two-shotting bosses, <laughs> two or three-shotting bosses later on, with a couple notable or exceptions. 
All right, so I picked up that rope. We're gonna put the rope ladder there and we're gonna go down it. And I am mm, 18 minutes-ish into the run, 20 minutes-ish. And we are already about at the end of disc one. Yeah, because despite this being an RPG, it's about two hours long. Less than two hours if you get decent RNG. So the better question is how long uh, does it take to swap the disc? And do you have like, a, when you run this game on your own stream, do you have a split for the disc swapping? I don't have a split for this swapping because I've got it down to a science at this point. I actually have it already set up next to me with the disc out and everything. <laughs> so all I have to do is when, during the fade to black, I will drop my controller, grab it and start the disc swap. So I actually don't have to work. Uh, it only takes me about a couple seconds. So this fight in particular, is an absolute pain. So if I go quiet for a second, that's because I'm trying to remember what I'm doing. Oh, of course, I immediately messed it up because I cast this spell on the wrong dude. It should be fine though. It just means that I'm gonna have to swap the order of some of the stiff. Okay. So each character has a move that they can do and they can do a attack. Most of the time you're not gonna be using move command, but during these early fights, you will. Okay. Now I set the characters up that way and sort of to force um, the enemies into a certain pattern of attack. Uh, do I know why it does that? No. <laughs> but you want to make sure that the evil James which, by the way, these are all doppelgangers of your characters, that the evil James is towards the back, and that Kadelka decides to run forward despite the fact that the evil Kadelka is squishy. Which is what happened there, and they're gone now. So we're already getting to the point where Kadelka's starting to do a lot of damage with her magic. <laughs> At least compared to hitting things with a hammer. Rats for all of the fights, so do this, then this, then this in order to get through the fight quickly, but sometimes because of RNG or fat fingering the button and accidentally hitting the wrong enemy with the wrong spell, like I just did, causes you to have to think on your feet a little. But despite there being a lot of RNG in this game, the RNG is really not that bad. Sure, you can't... Um, you can't assume you're going to have whatever stats at whatever point, but the game is routed in such a way as to remove as much of that as possible, especially when you're learning the run. And you'll see that um, early-ish in disc two, when we have the one. I'm sorry if you heard that, my chinchilla decided that he wanted to run on his reel really loudly. <laughs> some Panaceas. Now I don't have to worry about Kidelka getting silenced anymore. Okay, we're about to go into a disc swap. So let's see how fast I can get this disc swap done. That's what I meant by how fast it goes. It helps that I have my PS2 literally right next to my knee. 
All right, so here, you're stuck in a room. There's no way out. There's two items on the ground. You just need to grab them. Uh, game, thank you. And then look at the body of totally not corpses and then come over here. And that's how you solve this room. It took me way too long <laughs> to figure out how to do that. Um, Cause the game doesn't tell you what you need to do to get out of the room or trigger this boss fight. So you just sort of run around until you figure it out. All right, here, this fight's pretty easy. Just uh, set the enemy on fire and win. For a lot of the fights from now on, that's going to be the order of things. Cast the spell that is the opposite of the enemy's weakness, or that is the enemy's weakness, until they go down. Now, ideally, it would take only two rounds, but this probably is gonna take three rounds. Might, yeah, it's probably still gonna take three rounds. And this is the beginning of the eternal skipping Edward's turn segment of the game. <laughs> Thankfully, I've played this game enough times that I don't usually have to look and see what I have to do to level up because it doesn't change after this point. It's a little particular earlier on in the game. Wow, that was bad RNG. But for the most part, it's just pump agility um, for Kadelka, ag agility and intelligence for most of the game, and vitality for the other two, at least for a while. He always... He always... That particular enemy, I, there's some specific enemies in this game that seem to have it out for specific characters. That enemy there will always, without fail, shoot Kadelka first. And because Kadelka has very, very low defense for pretty much the entirety of the game, uh, it can one-shot her, which is a little annoying if you get that RNG. Now here is going to be one of the last times you see the menu in the game, or at least the uh, one of the specific menus. Oh, what am I doing? There we go. The last time that you see the formation screen, because this is the formation the characters will be in for the rest of the game. Now the formation screen just sets up what grid square that your characters start off on in a fight. But after this point, we never we never mess with it again. Because you never need to. Alright, and we are already almost at another boss fight. <laughs> if I hadn't gotten into a random fight there at least. So as you can see, I have the characters set up in such a way that Edward is towards the front because he literally spends the rest of the game being a meat shield. Which is kind of apt. Now, theoretically, you could make him a mage um, because the game doesn't prevent you from putting the level up stats into whatever you want, but the character starting stats definitely are saying, make Edward a meat shield and make Kadalka a glass cannon. So because it's faster, that's what we do in a speed run. All right, and now it's time for another boss. This one is slightly different than some of the other ones in that we are not going to actually cast a spell with Kidalka yet. And it's the only of two times in the game they use a fortify spell. Because we need to, Kidalka has, there's no RNG in which Kidalka will be strong enough 
to take this guy out quickly without using Fortify Intelligence, which boosts the damage of her spells. So it'll be the only time the entire run where you see Edward cast a spell, unless I mess something up and I have to use him to revive someone. But once both of them have cast their spells, then you can start attacking with Kanaka. Because it's kind of a waste of a turn if you attack with her before that. This music always makes me want to dance. One of my only issues with this game is that I do like the song, but I think it's used in almost every single fight that's not a boss fight. It is, um, well, this is the boss fight, Mutlark. Um. Oh. Well, I think it's used for every boss fight, too, then, right? Yes. Um. I just remember it was like a loop of two songs. Yes. I think the final boss has a unique song. The, um... Hold on. There we go. The there is the boss song, there is the fight song, which is your random fight song, and then there is the um first form final boss music and third form final boss music. So there the final boss is a three-stage boss fight. Um the first two stages have the same song, and the third stage has a different song. So the entire game really has four, four battles, four battle music, and three of them are boss music. It's a wide selection. <laughs> it does have a lot of music um, if you go and look it up, but a lot of the music, quote unquote music, isn't actually music. It sort of does the uh, horror thing of here, have some ambient wind sounds and dripping noises. <laughs> so if you actually go and look up the soundtrack for this game, most of it is ambient tracks with only like a f I think there's eight or so actual songs. All right. Now this is something never to forget. Those little pixels, you got to pick them up because <laughs> that is the crossbow, which is going to be the sole reason why you're going to be able to get through the next fight. Which is kind of rude, but that's the way it is. Okay, so this is going to be the only... Of course I get into a random fight when I don't want to. This is going to be the only area coming up in two rooms where we actually sit and grind for a second. Now, normally I would only grind a couple fights in that room in order to make sure Kodaka has enough HP for one specific area later. But because it's a marathon and for marathon safety, I'll stick around for a couple more fights to make sure I get a couple items that make later on much easier and it's this uh specific little grinding area that is that was not that was rather rude <sighs> i'm gonna focus here for a second okay <sighs> for a second there i thought i might have been in a little bit of trouble in a random fight um what was i saying <laughs> Something about the room. There we go. Right. So this little room up here is the one room in the game that I know of that gives you the ability to get um, that has an that has a variety in the uh, random drops that enemies can give you that it's worth it to grind in. If that makes sense. Now. Yeah. I, oh wait. Um, ideally, you want to make sure that Kadelka has at least 800 HP. Now, this enemy here, this knight, if you can take care of him, he has a chance to drop something called Chainmail. And if you can get that, you can don't have to grind at all and you can get out of here. Um, I'll still probably grind a little bit even if I get a Chainmail, just for safety's sake. <laughs> And there's no way I would be able to remember what the uh, elemental weaknesses for these guys are, so I do have a cheat sheet for them. 
I can imagine that's definitely helpful in a game like this. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's a requirement. I, I don't think that I'll ever get to the point where I can remember. Because there is... Everybody has their own elemental weakness, and you can't tell from looking at them what it is. <laughs> like, for some reason, this headless zombie thing with glass shards in its chest is weak to earth magic. And for some reason, the suit of armor is weak to fire. So hopefully chainmail. Come on, get RNG. Hey, I got chainmail. <laughs> so if I was doing this as an actual run, I would equip the chainmail on Kadalka and I would leave. But because this is a marathon run, I'm going to do a couple more fights to try and get a little bit more levels just to pad out some later game areas a bit more. Because you can get accessories in this room, which if you're having a very bad RNG, um, both James and Edward will spend the entire game or most of the game without accessories, which can hamstring you later on. But if you're still if you're still new to the game, I suggest sticking around this area for a while in order to bump those characters up just a touch. So this is one of the areas where I have to keep reminding myself in my head, keep my finger away from triangle so I don't accidentally run away from the fight. Because <laughs> you run from the fight by pressing triangle and then the run button. Thankfully, unlike most JRPGs, um, this is the only section of the game that you quote unquote grind in. If I remember right as well, uh, in terms of grinding, not only do you have to grind the general experience, doesn't magic rank up the more you use it? Yes, but interesting thing about that, um, in a speedrun, we don't care. <laughs> oh. Oh, that's convenient. Yeah, no, it's freak. It's pretty frequent, actually, that I go through an entire speed run without a single level up on the spells. Um, it does happen. It's not uncommon that I'll have a uh, fire or the flare spell level up to. I'll probably do one more fight and then we'll go. Um, that I have flare level up to level two. But it's also pretty frequent that I'll get all the way through to the final boss fight and all of my spells be level one. So the level up system on spells, which also goes to weapons, but I'll explain the uh, spells first. So the more you use a spell, the more experience that spell gets for that character. And eventually that spell will level up. Level up is not the best thing sometimes in a speed run, depending on what your stats are, because if flare levels from level one, Flare to level 2 flare, it doubles the MP cost, which can be bad if you don't have a high enough um, mind stat. Yeah, mind stat, which is the one that dictates how much MP you have. <laughs> so say you are in the final fights of the game, and you, well, let's say you're mm, a boss fight or two before the end, and your flare levels up to level two. And you're like, okay, I'm doing more damage. A higher level magic spell causes um, you to be able to hit more than one enemy at once if they're next to each other, which sure, cool. But then you run out of MP at, on the final fight and you have no items to replenish your MP with. That has happened to me before and it caused me to lose about 10 minutes on the final fight because I had to rely on James, who at that point will be a magic caster, but he won't be a good one. Oh no, piety stat, not the mind stat, is the one that controls your MP. And yes, it's abbreviated to Pi, which I find hilarious. Okay, I'm just gonna do a little bit of inventory. 
give you that. You can have this. Do I have another one? I do not. Okay. And just for safety, everybody is fully healed. That's great. So now it's time for another boss fight. Something that is really helpful is that uh, your characters all get full heals upon level up. Which is great, but kind of funny because frequently after boss fights you'll get two or three level ups per character. It's double the healing. <laughs> yeah. I wish. God, could you imagine if you leveled up three times and it just compounds the HP? Oh my god, I almost one-shot him. <laughs> so that's what happens when you spend a half a second grinding a bit. Because this enemy has 2,600 HP, and as you saw, I did over 2,000 there. So I almost one-shot this boss. <laughs> Oh, and for those who are wondering, this game does have two and a half endings. Um, and a half? And a half. The, thir the third one is one of my favorite cutscenes in the game, but it's technically a non-standard game over. Uh, it doesn't actually give you an ending. Um, that's why I say two and a half. But on the speedrun, on any percent category, which is what we're doing, we are getting the quote-unquote bad ending. <laughs> I say quote unquote, because it's the canon ending, and I think it's a better ending than the good ending, personally. But. I'm just gonna save myself some time later. There we go. So now we have projectile weapons again, because James has a bow gun. And we have to make sure that he has the bow gun, because James is about to. Or, your entire party is about to go through the worst, second worst boss fight in the game. And I say that because I spent all that time building Kadelka up, making sure she was a glass cannon, could almost one-shot a boss. This next fight, um, the boss is immune to magic. Which is the worst. Thankfully, it's the only fight like that in the game, but it's one of two very annoying boss fights in this game. There we go. I kind of wish I knew what stat helped out with being able to run from fights. <laughs> I think it's been stated that it's probably luck, but I don't know if anybody's actually confirmed that. All right. So this fight is against a man named Elias. He's just a regular dude. And because he's a regular dude, for some reason he's immune to magic. Also, not only is he immune to magic, but you can't hit him as long as these barricades are up. So you use Kadelka. ow. You use Kadelka in order to take out the barricades and everybody else just waits for a minute. Yes, I'm aware game that I can't escape. <laughs> oh, <laughs> and that is an example of me fat fingering um, the controls. Because instead of actually attacking with Kadilka there, I instead skipped her turn. <laughs> okay. Thankfully, this boss is very easy to predict. He always hits Kadilka, then Edward, then James. Then Kadelka, then Edward, then James. So as long as you know that, then you can just sort of guess who he's going to hit next. Alright, now it's Edward's time to shine for the only time in the game, because he's the only one who can deal damage.
Wow, that almost took out James in one hit. Great. Also, one thing that can that makes this fight take a little bit longer than strictly necessary is the fact that you have to reload the crossbow or the bow gun after every single time that Edward uses it. So that was two hits. Okay, he'll take two more. It is pretty neat how essentially every boss has their like special mechanic, so to speak. Yes, at least um, up until this point. <laughs> um, it's after here-ish. No, starting from disc three-ish, really. Um, it's just make sure you know what the enemy's uh, elemental weakness is, <laughs> and then just pound, just pound them with Kadelka's magic. <laughs> For the final fight. The final fight is a little gimmicky. And that should be good. There we go. Occasionally I know what I'm doing. And that was Elias. Okay. We talked to him because cutscenes and we want to get Important items. We're just going to skip that because this is a speed run. Cutscenes are not important, even though they're very pretty cutscenes. And we're just going to go back the way we came. Because we have some business with the keys that we just got from that fight. Which involved just going back to some previous areas, opening a couple doors, and getting a couple items. So I should probably note, because this is a room that can happen in. Okay, this is an example of Kidelka just not wanting to go upstairs. Um... There is an two random fights that you can get in specific areas of this game that is the only time that you, outside of the grind sessions, that you actually do the final, or actually do the fight. One is against an enemy called Mars, and the other one is against an enemy called the Black Cat. Now, <laughs> the Black Cat enemy... Um, is literally just a little cat. It's not a mutated creature or anything. It just looks like a black cat with a de glowing red demon eyes, but still just a little black kitty. Y you still have to take it out, though, if you're playing on the North American version of the game, if you happen to get it in a random fight during a speedrun, because it happens to have a chance to drop the most powerful mage weapon in the game. So it's a little sad, but... <laughs> Sometimes sacrifices need to be made. Oddly enough, since you mentioned the differences in versions, I think uh, for the speedrun leaderboard, every single version has its own unique board because of the weird difficulties between them. Yes, um, if I recall correctly, Japanese is significantly harder than PAL or NTSCU, which is North American. Um, in term, I can't remember exactly how it's harder. I'm pretty sure it has something to do with like the enemy stats and level. Of oh, 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 oh dear, oh dear. Okay, yep, mm, eh, that's a black cat. <laughs> Chat, I apologize for what I must do to the kitty. Oh. Uh, that's that's so weird because the last time I ran this game in a marathon setting, I got a black cat too, and I never get black cats when I'm streaming this game. <laughs> That is just the weirdest type of marathon luck. Um, but that's funny because I never get black cats when I'm playing this game on my own. I only get them when I'm doing a marathon. 
Okay. What was I talking about? Right, region differences. So... Okay, I, d I didn't even get the weapon, so I just <laughs> I just took out a kitty for nothing. <laughs> um... The other big region difference is the reason why you take out the black cat in the North American version. And why it's pretty much a requirement if you get a black cat um, spawn, but only in the North American version. Because there is a weapon called St. Daniel's Cross that's only in the Japanese and the PAL versions of the game. It is more powerful than the cat's eye um, weapon that the black cat drops. But it's for some reason they took it out of the North American version. Um, and that's the reason why if you get into a fight in black with the black cat enemy in the North American version, you gotta take out the black cat. Because the item that it drops is powerful enough that it's worth it. But I didn't even get it there, so. Oh. <laughs> so this is an example of what happens in a speed run when you're busy explaining something and you sort of, uh, what would you call it? Just not pay attention to where you're going and your muscle memory puts you in the wrong direction. I wasn't supposed to go here yet. <laughs> because I need to go back to where I got the crossbow or the bow gun in order to open a locked door that uh, you only really could see if uh, you're paying attention to the far wall because it sort of blends into the background a bit. Oh, not this guy again. <laughs> Every time. Every time. <laughs> also, that particular enemy can be annoying because for some reason he's very hard to run away from. Which is rather rude. Okay, now I gotta pick up these pixels. Make sure you pick up the pixels. You can barely see them from the uh, map screen, but there we go. And I gotta go pick up these pile of pixels. And it won't actually let you leave the room unless you look at this plaque. I don't know why, because there are two plaques for the puzzle coming up, but you only have to look at one of them in order to solve the puzzle. For some reason, it makes you force you to look at one, but doesn't force you to look at the other one. And I just need to run all the way back to Elias, who's just having a nap against the wall. Then we can go onwards into the first area where you have at least a decent chance of getting into a fight against the Mars enemy. It's only happened to me once in the library, but fingers crossed. <laughs> okay, now let's see if I can actually do this. I have messed this up before. There we go, first try. You just have to know where to walk on there in order to unlock the door. Are you kidding me? <laughs> what is this RNG? <laughs> I'm assuming that's bad. No, this is the Mars enemy I was talking about. <laughs> the one I've only ever gotten into a fight against once in this area. Oh. <laughs> Just immediately. <laughs> okay, because this enemy drops an item called scroll. Now, if you get anything other than an air scroll, if he drops it, and it's anything but an air scroll, it functionally lets you skip the worst boss in this entire game. <laughs> functionally lets you skip it, which is the best. But it doesn't always drop it. And sometimes when it does drop it, yeah, it didn't drop it that time, so. 
It only has about a 50% chance of dropping it, I think. Come on, Kidalka. Pick up, pick up the shard, lady. Thank you. We have another chance to get into a fight with him later on, though, which is nice. But I have gotten into, in a, in a later area, we're more likely to get into a fight against that enemy. I have gotten into a fight two times in a row against that enemy, killed the enemy, gotten the scroll item, and both times it was an air scroll, which I did the RNG for, like I calculated the RNG for that, and the RNG chance of that happening is so low, it caused me to lose about 10 minutes of my run. Because if you have to do the Apostle boss the normal way, it can take you a long time because of the gimmick of that fight. Now it's time to have another boss fight against the Chimera. Okay. Weakness is water, so we're just going to, as we will be doing for most of the fights from now on, just pelt it with its weakness with Kadelka and skip the other one's turns. <laughs> James doesn't become useful until about halfway through disc three, almost disc four. And Edward just gets to be meat shield for the rest of the game. Usually it takes me three hits, this time it took me two. That is a definite upside of actually grinding in the grind section. you to do this, but you need to go into this corner to keep going. <laughs> that corner specifically, not the other corners, that corner. That's, that's an important corner. Because they can't go any further in the game unless you trigger that cutscene. Which, of course, we skip it because it's a speedrun. Though, if you do ever play this game yourself, chat, um, I definitely do recommend it. Uh, good luck getting a copy, though. <laughs> This is one of those games that I wish that they would just put on PSN. Fashion for once, good. So, as a question about the game's RNG, really quick. Yes. Um, I know there's a large variance of time, and I'm guessing part of it's going to be being able to run away from certain fights or uh, just doing more damage in certain fights. But what all like entails, like what a really good run can be and like a really bad run. What do you mean? Uh, like I guess what's like. The bad, but what would a good example of bad RNG be that loses you time each time? Would it be like uh, the, having not being able to run away from fights? Bad RNG would be uh, taking too long to run from fights. For instance, when I was in a, um, the fight against that uh, pistol enemy from earlier, it took it just I it took me like ten t tries to actually run from the fight. Um, generally, running from fights should only take you three to four times tops. Bad RNG in this game is 
mostly involving what the stats on the weapons you get are. What stats on the weapons and the few armors you get. Come on, there we go. The big bad RNG moment would be how you handle the Apostle boss in the late game. And um, whether or not Kudelka gets silenced in specific fights. But for the most part, the two big RNG moments of the game are Apostle. Um, or... Well, it's, to be fair, it's mostly Apostle. <laughs> There's a lot of variance in this game, but the biggest wisdom tooth of Kadelka is the boss called Apostle. Um, hopefully... He's, he's such a headache that it's the second time where you sometimes will actually grind in the game. Is specifically right before that boss room because you have a chance of getting into a fight with the Mars enemy, which can get you a scroll item, which can make you skip the boss fight. Um, but the downside is the more you play this game, the more you'll uh, actually get those scroll items and the more consistently you'll get those scroll items and it'll get to the point where you can't get a good time unless you get the scroll item to skip that boss. Because the difference in time is uh, 60 seconds or 10 to 15 minutes. <laughs> on, on the two opposite ends of the spectrum, the best RNG for that boss fight and the worst RNG for that boss fight. If I had to guess, if I have to do the fight legitimately without a scroll item, it'll probably take me about seven. Which is very long for a Kadelka boss. But I will <laughs> I will complain more about that particular boss when we get closer to it, because it is a wisdom tooth of a boss fight. But other than that, the RNG in this game is less is it good or bad? It's how are you going to have to adapt to the RNG you could get? Because you can get a run that has good RNG on the weapons, but bad RNG on the accessories. You could have a run where you get chain mail or a run where you don't get chain mail. And if you don't get chain mail, you have to put level up points into Vitality on Kadelka. Because this cutscene I'm skipping and this fight that I'm going into, if you listen, that's not boss fight music even though this is obviously a boss monster, so we're gonna run away. This monster is called Gargoyle, and he's actually the game's super boss. Um, we don't touch him during the any percent. Also, I'm about to switch discs. There we go. Now we are on disc three. So we are more than halfway through the game already. Well, actually, we're straight up halfway through the game. Okay. So if you've been paying attention to the um, end fight screens, so like the experience screens that I've been seeing, and I'm going to do a safety save right here because this part is dangerous. You'll notice that I was getting things called Icon's Crown, Icon's Necklace, Icon's Earrings, etc. Hmm, actually, I'll do it there just to get Oh, nope, apparently I can't. Okay. <laughs> there we go. So, I'm alone right now. Or Kadelka is alone, I should say. There we go. Which means I don't have my brick wall called Edward to protect Kadelka, who is very, very squishy. <laughs> So this part of the game can get very, very dicey, especially because you have to do a boss fight alone as Kadelka. Which, thankfully, there is a temporary save right before that boss, but I have lost a not insignificant number of runs to that boss. Not that it is a hard boss, it's just if you don't pay attention to your HP during that fight, he can very easily take you down when you're not paying attention. Because you sort of get used to having 6,000 HP's worth of Edward in front of Kidelka. <laughs> I've actually lost a run to this random fight before. <laughs> By the way.
There we go. Really should have healed Kadalka before the fight, but it's fine. Okay, you know what? I'm just gonna be safe about this. We'll set the poor puppy on fire. It is slower. It's al almost always, not always always, but almost always slower to take out a random fight than just run from it. But just for safety there, I did it. Okay. So the entire point of this area is to shut off that waterfall. And we shut off that waterfall by putting the items that we got from the various bosses in the game onto a bunch of statues. get one no i didn't okay now one thing to remember don't go to the waterfall immediately pick up this random bunch of pixels because if you don't pick up this random bunch of pixels you can't finish the game <laughs> i'm not kidding oh <laughs> you can't finish the game if you don't pick up that random bunch of pixels um not having that random bunch of pixels yeah, it doesn't have good stats. Um, not having that random bunch of pixels is what causes you to get the non-standard game over at the end of the game. <laughs> if you don't have that in your inventory, the bad, the uh, game over happens. All right, don't worry about this whole scene. They're just having a nap. Just nap. Nap next to a guillotine. As one does. As 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 you do in a horror game. <laughs> Take naps. Have bonbons. It was an By apple the pie. guillotine. Yeah. By the guillotine. <laughs> By your friendly neighborhood guillotine. I do have to say, this is the prequel to Shadow Hearts, which by the way, this area, Nementon Monastery, does actually appear in Shadow Hearts. Um, oh, I didn't mean to do that. Because <laughs> that's what I normally do during a fight. Or during a, there we go. So I'm going to do another temporary save here. This is stuff that I would never do if I was actually running this game. I never save. Um, but just in case, because the next room is the room with that boss fight that you have to do alone as Kidalka. We're good. Hopefully this fight goes well. <laughs> because after this fight, there's only really one other fight where you have to worry about an actual game over in the game. is a punch, which is punching me. Bad RNG is a punch. Good RNG is um, casting magic. So we gotta hope for this guy to cast at me instead of attack me. Wow, I am a actually doing a lot of damage right now. <laughs> I'm gonna actually be able to three shot this guy. Usually it takes me about five hits, five to six hits to take him out. Um, this time it's only gonna take me three, which is very good. <laughs> That's good RNG. It's always good RNG for this guy to cast magic because it does less damage. Because Kadelka is strong against magic, she's just weak against everything else. Alright, and then that's this fight. <laughs> We're never going to use that. 
Because weirdly enough, the crossbow and the bow gun are more powerful than any of the firearms you get in the game. The crossbow, doesn't it need like, um, I think you need arrows for ammo instead of like a general, like, I think all the weapons in the game have unique ammo, right? Um, yes and no. The, oh, some the of them, ranged weapons. Some of them do share ammo, because I, if I remember correctly, there are multiple types of pistol. Um, right. And the two types of bow gun share ammo. But yeah, they do. You'll have like shotgun shells, rifle rounds, pistol shells. So this grave right here that um, you're praying in front of is where you would pick up the Daniel's Cross item. It's behind the grave if you were playing on the Japanese version or the PAL version. But we are playing the American version, so we don't get that. <laughs> Sad days for us. I don't know how much it affects the actual time. Um, like which version of the game is fastest because of that. My assumption is the Japanese is probably slowest just because of the harder one. Um, but if I had to guess, Pal's probably the fastest. All right, we got our buddies back. <laughs> now I don't have to worry about Kidoka being all alone. <laughs> Which is great. So I'm gonna have to backtrack a little bit. And by a little bit, I mean quite a bit. <laughs> Cause this later half of the game has a touch of backtracking in order to get to different areas. But there are two items that I've picked up as I have gone along. One of them was Bigna's doll and the other one was Balna's doll. One of them was next it, it, around that area where I got into the fight with against the black cat. And the other one I just picked up at uh, Daniel's grave. So those two items are required to get through a specific door that we have been past before. But I didn't point it out because it wasn't important. But now we can get past that door. So we're going to have to backtrack all the way to it. <laughs> Thankfully, I've opened the way there. But there's Elias just having a nap. I see a lot of people in the chat comparing this game to Shadow Hearts. I own all of them, all of the Shadow Hearts games and the Kadelka game. Of all of them, uh, Kadelka is definitely the darkest. By far, it is the closest. It is the more horror of a horror game. Shadow Hearts is also horror. I would say it has a lot of horror moments in it. But as the series goes on, it gets less and less horror and more and more RPG. Still a lot more horror adjacent than other RPGs, obviously, but this one's definitely got some spoops in it. If you're watching the cutscenes, there's less spoops if you're not. <laughs> now, one of the reason that I wish this game was on PSN so much is hardly anybody has played this game. And even those who do know of it, haven't don't have a copy of it because this game is one of those poor early PS1 era, PS2 era horror games that costs almost a month's rent. <laughs> or at least half a month's rent. Which it's is It's definitely been going up. Yeah, is what, what's the price of it going now? It's about 500. Is it still about 500 bucks? Uh last I remember was near 300. Mm -hmm. Is it for a complete copy well, or may just have gone up. Uh, complete. With manual? Maybe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let me check. Because I remember I your copy doesn't have a manual. Let me double check my. I never actually checked. Okay, I'm about to have a boss fight against Charlotte. So, you don't actually. You can't actually skip this fight, or at least the second part of this fight. But because we gotta go fast, because we're speedrunning, we're not actually we're not actually doing the actual thing you have to do in order to skip the second half of the fight. So we have to do all of the fight, which is fine. 
but um, also yes, no manual. Oh, okay, I completely forgot to re-equip <laughs> Jones. <laughs> Oh no! And now the furniture is gonna get you. <laughs> no, it'll be fine. It'll just mean it'll just mean that the fight's gonna take up a little bit longer than I wanted. <laughs> because James may be underpowered right now, but Kadalka hits like a truck. But how much did you say it costs? Uh, I think probably around three hundred. I don't yeah. remember exactly what I paid for mine, but I don't have the manual. Yeah. Um. That's the that's the funny story about my copy specifically, <laughs> is the fact that mine was free. Didn't you get Kuan for like cheap? <laughs> Relatively cheap. It still cost me almost six hundred. <laughs> oh okay okay. Um, Kuan cost me five hundred and seventy five. Yeah, it was five hundred seventy five. Um, but I'm I'm kind of okay with having paid that much for Kuan, mostly because I've gotten so much out of that game, but also because of the other rare PS1, PS2 horror games that I have, I got for very cheap <laughs> and or free, so I, I'll kind of take it. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely a bunch of games that I wish were on PSN. You got Kodalka, Kuan, Rule of Rose, Haunting Ground. Haunting Ground is. Is it? On Japanese PSN. Oh! <laughs> for speedrunning purposes, sure, but if you want to play the game for the first time, you don't speak Japanese. Uh, English voice acting is in the game, oh, it but is? you will have trouble reading. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which kind of makes it hard if you're playing the game for the first time. I mean, I can speak Japanese, but most people can't. There we go. That was the first part of Charlotte, at least. And now the fight against actual Charlotte, who is not, well, who is technically that little ghost girl you saw for half a second there before I skipped the cutscene, but she turned into this, so a little bit less, a little bit less cute. This fight is entirely just spam Geyser and skip Edward's turn. <laughs> so there's not much about this fight. Just keep an eye on people's HPs, spam, throw water at the enemy, and skip Edward. Because <laughs> it's always skip Edward. Okay, okay, this fight's gonna be pretty short, but mostly because Kadaka's a little bit more overpowered than I'm used to. <laughs> Yeah, because I didn't equip equip James properly, he only did 56 damage. For reference, Kodaka did over 2,000. <sighs> if you go get an optional item at a certain point in the game, you can skip this particular fight that I'm doing right now. But it's out of the way, so you don't do it. Which is a little sad, because instead of helping the little girl's soul rest in peace, she instead turns into a demon and you have to take her out. Take out Charlotte. There she is. Okay. So at this point, I'm switching Kidalka from leveling up her agility. I'm not going to level up anymore, at least not until later. Because once you reach 40 agility, it's not really useful to level it up, except for one very specific moment later where you might have to, but you might not, depending on what your stats all what your stats are. 
Now let's actually do the thing I was supposed to do before the fight. <laughs> I'll do that. Okay. And not just because we'll throw these on Edward just so he can help survive the fight later. <laughs> Even though it's really not required. Maybe Gotti might as well use it. Exactly. It's usual where I don't ever equip Edward with anything past the early game. the room where I got into the fight with the black cat when I was playing this at the last marathon I played it at. Which means it could happen again. It's unlikely, but with the luck I've been getting this run so far. Alright. Every time it says something's not right at the bottom of the screen, you know you're in a boss fight room. So if you're ever playing this game yourself, that's how you know you need to make sure you've uh, properly made sure you're healed up. So this is Jezebel. Jezebel is easy. We're just going to set them on fire. That's how you deal with a lot of your problems in Kadoka. Just set it on fire. But the slight change is that James is actually kind of useful now. Not nearly as useful as Kadoka is, but more useful than not. But the downside is this guy has a lot of HP. He has 9,000, so it's going to take me a fair few rounds to actually take him out. So if you got any questions about the game, now's the time to ask them. No, uh, most of it's been rather straightforward. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, let's see. Like, most of the level of mechanics have been, I think, pretty much the same for most of the run, if I remember correctly, right? Yeah, um, the level up mechanic is pretty set in what you do in the early game. But there's a specific-ish moment where you just sort of go, eh, here's a guideline. <laughs> Beyond that, have at. The guideline is you want to equally level up the... Oh, don't attack. You want to equally level up James and Kadelka's intelligence stat and agility stat until agility reaches 40, and then you level up um, intelligence and the mind stat in order to boost damage and boost crit chance. The mind stat is a very weird stat in Kadelka. It helps boost damage, but also boosts... It's not entirely sure what it does, we just know that it helps. <laughs> the game manual says it increases hit chance, but that's not really a thing in Kadelka. Um, because attacks don't really miss in this game. If something's marked as missing, it's not that the attack misses, it's that you cast it against something that it's immune to. So if something's immune to magic, it won't just say zero damage, it'll say it missed. Which is a little confusing sometimes. I completely was not paying attention to how much damage I did. that's a downside on the weapon that I have on James specifically. It's called the Evil Horn. <laughs> um, some of the weapons in this game have a reach, so they hit a square beyond what's next to them. That can be a little annoying with where James is currently situated, though. <laughs> um, because I have fat-fingered it before and accidentally attacked instead of casting spells. Which is less than ideal, actually. Yeah. Okay. So now that's fight's done. We go back the way we came and trigger a cutscene. Mm. 
which we immediately skip. So some of the story of this game. Um, all of our characters are in the monastery area, monastery church mansion thing for their different reasons. Kadelka was led here by a voice that kept screaming in her head and kept giving her headaches. So she's like, okay, I'll do what you want. James is here because he was sent by the Vatican to pick up something called the Emigre document that was stolen from the Vatican. And uh, Edward is here because he likes adventure. Edward is a simple man. <laughs> he, he, he just wants adventure. Um, Kadelka, thank you. There we go. So the cutscene that I just skipped there, we find out that not only is James here for this emigrate document, but the former owners of the, well, I guess technically current, but former owners of the monastery, well, one, uh, it was a husband and wife trio. The, hu the wife sadly perished. And the husband was like, I know what I'm going to do with this paper that I stole from the Vatican. I'm going to resurrect her because that always goes well in horror games. Spoiler alert, it does not go well. And now all of our characters have to deal with the aftermath with it and get rid of all the demons that are now infesting the manor. There we go. So, one thing that I'm going to sort of... It's not really sequence breaking, it's just if you know do you, if you know you can do it, you can do it early. But I'm going to have to do a really big backtrack in a second here. Because in this room coming up, there is a bottle. We're going to grab the bottle and then we're going to backtrack to all of the way to just before the Charlotte boss. <laughs> so it is the longest backtrack in the game. Thankfully, we only have to do it once. But it's fastest to do it now, so you do it now. Downside is that it's a very long backtrack. <laughs> Actually, I think a question I actually never, uh, we never ended up talking about or I never ended up asking. Um, for the enemy spawns, how exactly does that work? <laughs> I, know some, uh, I know some RPGs do like step count, some are just like length of time. You know, I don't know. <laughs> um, it's, not, it's not step count. I don't think it's step count just from the feel of the game and having played it as much as I have, I don't think it's step count. But... It's... Because this game has such a small community, it can kind of get a little uh, squirrely trying to figure out, like, what is actually in the game. Like, what it actually is and isn't. But... If I had to guess, it's probably based on a timer. Partially because there was an item that I picked up earlier that I forgot to mention called the mask, and the mask has your encounter rate. But the encounter rate is also affected, I'm pretty sure this has been confirmed, is also affected by your luck stat, which can be different depending on what equipment you get during the game. And sometimes you can go whole minutes like 10 minutes without a single random fight and then you'll do another run of the game and you'll be getting a fight every room. Thankfully, at this point in the game, you can see that I got from point A to point B with, I think I only got into one fight, one or two, which is pretty good RNG. Um, but as for whether or not it's definitively based off a count or based off a step, I have no idea. <laughs> okay, so we're going to crawl into a fireplace. Because that's just what you do. Also, I do see in chat, uh, someone does mention that it is step count. Is it step count? Okay. Yeah, step count does seem to be the more common one. It just doesn't... It just never feels like step count to me, because if it is, then the step count range must be massive. 
Because again, sometimes I'll go through a room and I will get into a bunch of fights, but some t other times, other runs, I'll go through a room and get into no fights. about a specific boss called Apostle. Yeah, we're about to do that fight. <laughs> um, so this is going to be the second time in the game that I do actually spend a minute or two trying to grind specifically to get the Mars enemy again. Because sadly, we didn't get the item earlier. If I can get it now, we can skip the fight. Um, but my estimate does include time for doing the fight normally. So even if I have to do the fight normally, it is what it is. <laughs> At least I am a little bit more overpowered, so it should make the fight a little bit less of a pain in the butt. But one downside of having the mask item, which has my encounter rate, is the one time where I wanted to not do that. <laughs> okay. This is the best room in the game to get that scroll that item that lets me skip the boss fight. But it's only about a 50% chance, if I remember correctly. Because it's like every other fight or two of the four fights you can get into in this room give you a chance for the drop. And then you have to have the, you have to actually get the drop. And then you have to get the right kind of drop. Because the scroll item, which is a massive um, spell item, can be one of four elements, fire, uh, earth, wind, or fire, earth, wind, water. Now, if it's air, then it's useless. If it's anything else, we can skip the boss. <laughs> because not only is this boss a pain in the butt, he is immune to earth, or er, air magic. I'm getting payback for having good RNG earlier. It's the roll of the dice. <laughs> well, it's what happened last time I played this at a marathon. <laughs> Come on, game. No, it may seem like wasting time, but it's definitely worth it. Because if I was to say there was one thing in speedrunning this game that makes it really annoying to speedrun, it's this fight. It's this boss fight. Um, I don't really have trouble with any of the other parts, and I still find them fun, but this boss is just not fun. <laughs> Come on, game! Work with me here! But no, when you asked earlier about RNG in this game, this is what I meant by Apostle RNG. Gotcha. <laughs> Try it one more time. If I don't get it, then we will do the fight normally. Come on, game. This is the one time I want you to actually give me a random fight. I want you to give me the right kind of random fight. <laughs> Come on, game. Even my chinchillas running around on their wheel to try and get you to actually give me a fight. Just run around in circles. I've never gone this long without getting into a fight before. Marathon luck, huh? Yeah! <laughs> it's 
payback for getting good luck earlier. As is normal, it's not infrequent where I'll get really, really good luck up until this specific room. <laughs> okay, game, work with me, please. Patched. <laughs> yeah, you know what? Fine. I don't know. Okay, fine, we'll do it. We'll do it normally. It's, t it's taking too long. Okay, so this is a puzzle. Um, if you are a runner of this game, or you know this game, you know why this is the worst part of the game, this fight specifically. Now, use, yeah, use flare. Now I might have, I'm going to focus a little bit here because Apostle has two states. A you can damage me state and a you can't damage me state. Now you can tell which state that Apostle is in based off of this animation that it's doing. This is a don't touch me or I will heal all damage. Um, which he just did because James didn't cast quickly enough. Okay, fine. So, okay, he's actually casting. But the problem is the enemy's casting animation is, it, it overwrites the I am immune to damage animation. So there are times in this fight where you can't actually tell whether or not you can do damage. So you kind of have to wait until the game allows you to attack the enemy. Which is why this fight can take ages sometimes. <laughs> Now, he stopped squirming, but I skipped James' turn there anyway, because he may have stopped squirming, but he wasn't completely still. You have to wait for the boss to be completely still. Because if he's not completely still, you will heal him on accident. So I just have to keep skipping everybody's um, turn. Until... and I still can't attack him because I don't know if he's still healing all damage or not. <laughs> so I have to wait for him to finish his attack and then cross my fingers that I can actually hit. Which I can. And just because of stat spread, I'm just going to attack with Kadelka. Mostly for safety reasons, because theoretically I could attack with James as well, but I don't trust the game. I don't trust it. Yeah, that's what I thought. And the reason I put James, or the reason why I put Edward where he was and why I cast a reflect on him is essentially to uh, make the boss not able to do any damage to anyone. Because he'll only use that one attack and he'll only use it against Edward. So essentially the entire fight is a big waiting game. You have to wait to get an opening and skip everybody's turn um, when you don't have that opening. The one upside is that I do have decent stats on my weapon, so there's that at least. <laughs> if I remember right about this fight, um, isn't this like one of the hardest fights in the game if you don't know what you're doing? <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> 
Um, it's, if you know what you're doing, it's the most annoying, by far. Um, yeah, I just remember the wings being like a symbol of like, okay, attack now, don't attack now. Yeah. It's, and I kept healing him on accident. Yeah, and then there's the fact that even if you get a scroll item from the Mars enemy, if it's an air scroll, you can't use it because he's immune to air attacks. <laughs> like, oh. at least give me something, game. <laughs> I shouldn't have done that. I took a risk, and it was okay. No, it was an okay call. Okay. Because for frame of reference, he has about eight thousand HP, and I've done about four thousand damage—a little bit less than four thousand damage. So he's about halfway through. Um, it can be a little dicey sometimes when you—you uh, know what? Um, it can be a little dicey sometimes when you attack him, and if he starts casting before your spell goes off, you can get into a situation where you accidentally heal him. <laughs> because even though he wasn't absorbing damage when you attacked him, he started absorbing damage before your spell goes off. Okay, so that's about... About 5,000, so theoretically, theoretically about three more hits. <laughs> as long as I don't accidentally heal him. But now one thing that makes this fight even more annoying is how late in the game it is. <laughs> And when he's casting, you don't know if he's absorbing damage or if he's not absorbing damage. <laughs> mm, I need to put Reflect back on Edward because I haven't been in this fight so long that that's worn off of him. <laughs> This, this fight is definitely where runs go to die. I've lost many, many runs that were on very, very good pace to this fight. But I feel like most speedruns have that one moment in the speedrun that's just the worst. <laughs> You mentioned earlier about the leveling up of spells. Um, it's usually when I have to actually do the Apostle fight legitimately. Kadelka's magic level just went up, so I've leveled up Flare. Usually I go through an entire run without leveling up Flare. <laughs> but Flare's leveled up just because of this fight. You gotta love the bad RNG sometimes. <laughs> yeah! You gotta love it, but it'd be, it'd, be, it'd be great if it didn't. It's a good showing that not all runs always go according to plan. Exactly, and Kadelka runs are just... They're just great at not going according to plan. <laughs> but, um... I think I've got, like, one or two more hits left. Though, interestingly enough, I find this RNG, the RNG for this game specifically, to be less annoying than, say, the Kuon phase in Kuon. Um, because sure, this is RNG, but you can still get through it and get a good time. Um, but the other runs I found have RNG that is just, it's a coin toss whether or not you finish the run in five minutes or 15. So I can, I can forgive Apostle for being in Wisdom Tooth in one of my favorite speedruns. 
because the rest of the game's so good and so much fun to play. But to give you sort of a tally, I have lost at this point about seven minutes on this fight alone so far. I lost track of how much HP he has. Hey! Okay! Hey. <laughs> and he's done! <laughs> this fight is the only reason why my estimate is 215. <laughs> you get a bajillion HP or a bajillion uh, <laughs> level ups from this fight. Four level ups for James alone. I just like how uh, I think it's uh, Edward. His, he has like 80 vitality yep, now. Yep. <laughs> I need that brick wall. I need that brick wall. Ek. <laughs> Also, I got a crossbow, so we're gonna swap out the bowgun for the crossbow. Okay, come on, Kadoka. All right, we're almost at a disc swap, or at least we will be in a second here. I just can't remember if it's now or if it's in a minute. <laughs> yep, it's now, okay. Good thing I was ready for it. <laughs> All right, so what you missed in that cutscene is they can't get through that door. It's locked shut. Oh no, whatever shall we do? Well, good thing that we have a priest who for some reason knows how to make dynamite. <laughs> they never explain why James knows how to do this, but James knows how to make nitroglycerin. So that is where that bottle full of acid that I got earlier comes into play because he's going to use that bottle of acid to make nitroglycerin. I'm going to Sadly, we have to skip the cutscene coming up here, but ooh, even if you have to go to YouTube to watch it, I, mm, it's the best cutscene because our two two of our main characters, uh, Kadalka and James, get complete. Just, they just have a lot of they just have a lot of fun times with some uh, choice spicy water, and it goes on for about seven minutes. <laughs> But if you look up any cutscene in this game, that's the best one. So now that our resident uh, priest party member has made a bomb, we're going to go set off that bomb inside an old rickety monastery that is definitely structurally sound. Because that's safe. All right, so the bomb gets placed down. J Edward shoots it with a gun. It goes off, and suddenly there is a giant hole in the wall. And now we're going into the final-ish area of the game, very close to the point of no return. We just have to do one little thing in this area first, which is currently, it's, it's a, I think this is the actual monastery, like the main monastery part of the monastery. And it's currently covered in this big giant plant. Because part of what the owner, Patrick, did to try and bring back his wife was uh, turned her into a giant plant monster. This 
game has weird lore. It tracks. It it, it tracks. It, it has weird lore. He t he turned his wife into turned her body into a plant monster, and the final fight is against the uh, plant monster, sort of plant monster adjacent. Okay. So now that I have played the secret organ spell on the secret organ, we can actually go to the final area of the game, which is one, two, three, four, five boss fights in a row, <laughs> technically. And funnily enough, um, just because of the strats that you use against the fights, it's the first two that aren't really bosses, they're more like mini-bosses, that are actually more dangerous <laughs> to the run than the uh, actual final boss. So just for safety, I'm gonna put- I'm gonna save here. Okay. Uh, that's not what I told you to do. There we go. So I picked up a random discarded arm earlier, just before the Elias fights, and that random discarded arm, that's another bunch of pixels that is very easily missed, is what you need to throw into that cauldron to start the final part of the game. The game doesn't really tell you that. <laughs> Come on, Kidalka. They're stairs. You know how to use them. Okay, so now it's the fight against the root enemies. There's two fights. One here and one a little bit further down. These guys hit really, really hard, so I have to watch Edward's HP to make sure that they don't take him out. Because they can very easily do so. Even though he has 6,000 HP. <laughs> Thankfully, though, Kidelka hits like a truck. Okay, that wasn't enough. So these are big roots of that plant that I was talking about that is going to birth the demon body of the caretaker's wife. But since they're plants, they just set them on fire. That's what they're weak to. You just spam fire until when. Okay, so here's the upside of the fact that I have level two flare. Because all three of them are lined up in a row, and I have level two flare, yeah, they all get hit. That's the upside of having level two of a spell, is it hits all adjacent enemies. But it's only ever really seen during the speedrun during the root fights, because you never use it before that. And you, there's not really any chance to get access to it before that. Mr. Root Friend, please leave me alone. Uh, I can't hit the guy behind. So sometimes you can't, if you have an enemy directly in front of you, you can't actually hit the person behind them with a projectile weapon, which can be a little annoying, but it's fine. <laughs>
Wipe it off. Ah, there we go. Cool, so that's the first fight done, at least. Now I gotta do that again, except against a harder enemy. <laughs> This is the second time in the game where you want to make sure that Kidalka has a high enough um, agility. You want to make sure she has 66, specifically 66 agility before the final fight. Just so you can make sure that everybody's turns land where you want them to. Kadalka, stairs, please. Kadalka. <laughs> Kadalka! Please! <laughs> Thank you! Now that's what I meant by sometimes she just doesn't go up the stair prompt. Okay, so here's fight number two. Second verse, same as the first, sort of. It's only two enemies, but the one with the uh, lovely little zombie body of Patrick in it can't actually be hit until the other one is destroyed. And he has twice the HP of the other one, which is slightly annoying, but thankfully I'm overpowered at this point. So it should be decently easy unless I get unlucky with them taking out Edward. So, fun fact, I didn't actually know that the Patrick Root boss was immune to damage until uh, it was like my 10th or 12th speedrun of this game and somebody mentioned it in my chat. Because <laughs> it's not mentioned in the guide. <laughs> So now we can actually hit the other one. <laughs> Downside is he has over 9,000 HP. And he hits like a truck. I probably should have healed Edward there, but it's, it's fine. <laughs> it's fine. Sometimes you gotta risk it for the biscuit. Oh, he has 200 HP! <laughs> lost track of how much HP he has left. Oops. <laughs> okay, he's almost dead. It, um, as soon as the root enemies move away from you, you know they're one, maybe two hits from dead. And there it goes! So that's boss fight two of five. 
Though really two of four because the last fight's not really a boss fight, if we're being perfectly honest. The last boss fight is cross your fingers that you get KO'd as soon as possible. <laughs> So remember how I mentioned that there is a non-standard game over that you can get that has my favorite cutscene in the game? Right. Um, it happens in the, like, next area that I go into. Um, so stress this again. <laughs> that pendant that I picked up earlier, you absolutely have to pick that up or you cannot finish the game. Um, I don't think there is a point... I don't think you can do a permanent save. In this area, I, there might be one hidden permanent save point here. I can't remember. Um, but it is fairly difficult to accidentally make it so you can't finish the game altogether. And I have heard, I don't know if it's been confirmed, but I have heard you can pick up the pendant from a random fight in this area. But this specific room here with a pretty giant flower in it is your one warning that if you don't have the pendant, you can't finish it. So just because we're about to go into the final fight, I'm going to save here just for safety. Okay. But now if you've ever seen Indiana, jo um, Indiana Jones and I can't remember which Indiana Jones, but the one with the... Uh, um, uh, Ark, Ark of Covenant, the one that makes the guy's faces melt. Yeah, the original one. Yeah, that's what happens during the cutscene that gives you the game over. Oh. <laughs> that's literally what happens to all of your party. Well, it is an ending. Uh, yeah. Huh? It's a ending because technically you get an FMV. <laughs> okay, this is Elaine. Also, welcome to my favorite music. It's just, it's, it's so good. It's so good. So this fight is going to be different. Oh. I'm going to not really attack to start off with. I'm going to start off with casting Reflect on specifically Kadelka and James, and Edward just gets left to fend for himself as per usual. <laughs> um, because Elaine's defense stats are so high and her attack stats are so high that it's actually better to make her damage herself through Reflect than actually casting against her. As you see, I just did um, 2.5k of damage just from reflecting the damage off of Kadelka. Okay, and then I just keep waiting until the boss starts to attack. And when the boss starts casting, that's when I attack with Kadelka. Come on, game. Come on, Elaine. Are they? Yeah, they are. Okay. There we go. All right. And this version is resistant to water and earth, so we're going to use Flare. Because um, you have to do this fight twice, and the only thing that changes between fights is in this fight, she's immune to physical damage, so Edward is useless. <laughs> Um, and she absorbs water and earth. Or is, gets, doesn't get damaged by them, I can't remember which. And that should, oh no, that didn't, mm, okay. It's gonna take one more hit to kill her, probably. Because when she starts dancing like that, that means that she's near, um, near dead. Okay, game. You're gonna be like that, huh? <laughs> mm. 
There we go. There goes a lane number one. Now we just have to do that again. And then the fight, and then the game is functionally over. There's technically one more boss, but since we are doing any percent, we are getting the quote unquote bad ending, which means we lose to the final boss. So the only, the difference between the endings is whether or not you defeat or lose to the final fight. And the final fight does like 3000 damage every hit. So it's actually really hard to succeed that fight. Okay, second verse, same as the first. We just cast Reflect on James and Kadalka. Though the slight difference in this fight is that Edward can actually attack. Um, because the boss is no longer immune to physical damage. It'll be fine. That's fine. <laughs> this is why I did a safety save. <laughs> Thankfully, we have to wait until Elaine starts casting to cast ourselves just to mess with the order of when spells go off. So it's fine. <laughs> okay, remember how I mentioned earlier sometimes getting level 2 flare can mess you up later? Right. Yeah, that just happened. Oh. That's fine. Because <laughs> I have run out of MP because I was not keeping track of my MP costs. But it's okay because most of the damage in this fight comes from um, Reflect anyway, so it really doesn't matter. It just means the round, it's going to take like another round or so. James, who can do a little bit of damage. <laughs> not as much we'll comparatively. Try his best. Yeah, not as much comparatively, but it's something. <laughs> Kadelka is the speed run of making sure that you have backups. I do for these later fights is I try and track the HP in the head in my head so I know how close they are. Because both phases of Elaine have about uh, 12k HP. There we go. Okay. Cool. Um, coming up is the last fight, even though on any percent it's not really a fight because we're just waiting for the enemy to take us out. Um, time will be when the last party member goes down. Which is kind of sad because this is, I love this music as well, but you hardly hear it in the speedrun. <laughs> It is kind of neat that instead of a traditional RPG style where you're, you know, you're winning the fight, being the final boss, you have it just be, and then we died. Yeah. Okay. 
Best RNG is her casting a spell that hits everybody at once. Yes! And time. Perfect. Perfect timing. <laughs> I hardly ever get that RNG. Usually it takes uh, like three or four rounds before it ends. If you get lucky. If you get lucky. So that's Kadelka. Um, yeah, I managed to get under estimate. <laughs> even though we had that's the terrible, important thing. even with the terrible apostle RNG, still under estimate. <laughs> so, yeah, thank you for inviting me. I do love this game. It's a classic game. And I, as well, uh, do you have any shout outs you like to give to anyone? Well, um, people, I've seen people mention them in the chat and I always shout them out, but they're around here somewhere. If you guys have seen bunnies in my camera, um, they are Garrus and Tally. They have their own dedicated webcam on my Twitch stream. So if you want to see more of the bunnies or my chinchillas, you should uh, give me a follow. And where can they find you? at twitch.tv slash Miss Scarlet Tanager. That is Scarlet with one T and Tanager with one T. Um, I would also like to give a shout out to, oh God, what's her Instagram? Regina, Regina Marie on Instagram, who was my friend in high school. She's a cosplayer who was the one who technically technically is the owner of this game because I borrowed it from her when I was in high school well over a decade ago, completely forgot about it in my closet, and that's the reason why I have a $500 video game now. <laughs> I it all works out. I accidentally stole it. <laughs> Maybe one day she'll get it back. No, 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 no. I've had it far longer than she ever had it. It's mine now. She can't have it back. That's how it goes then. <laughs> so, yeah, so uh, that's it. And I wish more people could get a chance to play this game, but at least you guys can see it in all of its great PS1 glory. And yeah, we can watch the little ending cuts in here. But uh, I just want to say as well that we will be going to a break after this. We do have one final run of the night. Definitely stick around for that. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you for having me. Each other again. Yeah. Hey, your nickname, Slato? What does it mean? I haven't even asked you yet. Will you tell me? It. It means treasure. Oh, that's rich. I remember that. Treasure. Oh, and this is the ending that goes into Shadow Hearts, by the way. The bad ending. Is it okay, child, for you not to follow him? Yeah, it's okay. I have a feeling that someday, somewhere, we'll meet again. Thank you again, Miss Scarlet Tanger with the Kudelka Run. We are going to go and cut over to a quick break. This is the time to stand up, touch your toes, stretch your legs, and do what you need to do. Uh, as well, if you have any ideas for your own show or one-off events, feel free to go to gamesdonequick.com slash hotfix to submit your ideas.